Is hip hop dead, Chad? Answer me that. Is it dead? What is it that you listen to? What is it that you consume? You woofoo please? We might still do the you woofoo have you heard anyone say recently video games are not as good as they used to be? Movies. Okay, but that's actually facts though. They're not as good as they used to be. Cars, the NBA, the NFL, music is not as good as it used to be. And no, you're not crazy. There's a lot of truth to these statements. Now, hip hop is not dying, but you have to be totally narrow-minded to think that it's as dominant as it used to be. And most of you know me as the hip hop guy, and don't worry, I'm not about to just shit all over this genre that made me. I still love it, and I ain't going anywhere, so get that out of your head. But for, most people- for, for right now, you know what I'm saying? Until eventually the moment comes where he gotta drop a rock album. And then it's all downhill from there. Rebrand. This genre was never nothing. I never liked those ni It's only a matter of time. I don't I don't put nothing past you, Mr. Patrick CC. I don't. People who've been discussed. I expect anything from anyone. Sing this topic, exhaust these I hate this type of video too, by the way. This whole like hip hop is dying shit. Like I I've always hated this over the past year. It's taken so much enjoyability out of hip hop discourse that it's not even funny. Same old arguments. The beats are repetitive. The lyrics have no meaning. They only rap about murder, girls, drugs, and money. There are too many clones. They're just trying to go viral and not create art. They're clout chasing, violence, blah, blah, blah. Now, those are some good points and they ain't wrong, but the problem is so much deeper than that. The truth is our world, our species, human civilization is advancing into something far more complex than what we used to be. And I know I'm coming off extremely pretentious and annoying and trying to be too smart. Just let me cook for a second because I really- I'm gonna let you cook, you know, because I'm gonna I'm allow you to be in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? The seasoning is right above you, so don't forget that. Um, but. In my mind, I, I don't know if people are changing like that. You know what happened when I did that list of the top albums and I did the top songs list? There were a lot of people that messaged me and was like, yo, you just put me on to this. I'm glad I never listened to something like uh, Cara Jackson before or I never listened to something like uh, uh, Leaf Ward or I never listened to Pink Panthers before or I'm just not listening to uh, the Lemon Twigs. Like, that's great. But there were just as many people that were like cynical about the idea that I basically had to cater to a market that was anti-mainstream in order for me to justify quote unquote placements that i thought were good so i think there are enough people that'll say in response to this obviously hip-hop's not dead it's just in what it is that you want to listen to what it is that you want to consume obviously like music in itself like all these forms of mediums are all these mediums aren't dead you could just look for better shit but there's going to be just as many people i personally feel like that'll look at the people who have these quote unquote unconventional lists or these less desired, less mainstream lists and be like, oh no, you're pandering. Oh no, this is pretentious. Oh no, you, you're trying to be different. There's a plenty of people that are like that. Even when you try to expose them to something new or something different, it's like, nah, I, I don't believe you genuinely like this. You don't know the amount of times I got that, bro. I think I got something here. Now I'll start by saying something positive about hip hop. There have never been as many artists making high quality hip hop records as there is right now. Let me rephrase that. Hip hop is still really fucking good. But most people are just too busy. Appreciate the sub. Or lazy to go and look for it. And listen, I'm included in that. If you want the good stuff, you gotta dig for it. But most of you won't. Which brings me to my first point. Off topic, but did you see the Tesla robot? Oh my god, Trey, Trey, with Trey, 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 oh my god. Does it look like the does it look like the time? Does it look like we're ready for that conversation right now? You are being overexposed to media, which leads you to being paralyzed by choice and therefore never feeling fulfilled. 100,000 songs are being uploaded to Spotify every day. Spotify's algorithm is fucking insane. So is TikToks. I still feel like we need a genuine scientific case study about the algorithmic purposes and background of uh tiktok spotify is amazing i don't feel the same way i don't like the integrate like i don't like the layout for spotify to be honest and i don't really genuinely feel like it belongs on apple phones i'm just being honest with you bro unless it's an app that's 
like integrated within the software of the OS of the phone that you're using. I feel like that's the only real justification. Um, that's why for me, it makes sense to use Apple Music. Not that Spotify don't work just as well, but the fact that I have to go to the app to use it is just so stupid to me. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, but the second thing is what he said here that I wanted to, I want to address. Or lazy to go and look for it. And listen, I'm included in that. I think the reason people get so overwhelmed when it comes to looking for new artists is simply because they don't set any goals for themselves. People think that you have to permanently put yourself in position to find like a new artist every single day for 365 days of the year. And if you don't, you've like failed or you have not accomplished your mission in listening to the very best of the very best of music. When in reality, if you want to find new artists at random, especially you could just set a small goal for yourself. I want to find three new artists to listen to this month. That's not a hard goal. That's not a difficult thing to do. That's not a difficult mission to accomplish. But people get so enamored by this idea of like eclectic music taste. And I got to I got to be in the know about everything all the time, all at once. When you got to understand. Nine times out of ten, you're missing. I don't know how many albums were dropped this year. I gave you my top 25 plus my top 50 songs. The amount of albums I missed this year is probably insane. It's unfathomable the amount of music that I still missed this year that I could listen to probably a decade from now and be blown away by if I listened to it because it had the year 2023 attached to it. You can find anything at any time. And I know how overwhelming it might seem to have such a vast catalog in front of you at the ready at any moment. But set a small goal for yourself. So just a small goal. I want to find a couple new artists this month. I give myself 30 days to do it. I can do it. It don't have to be all at once. Not all at the same time. If you want the good stuff, you got to dig for it. But most of you won't. Which brings me to my first point. You are being overexposed to media, which leads you to being paralyzed by choice and therefore never feeling fulfilled. 100,000 songs are being uploaded to Spotify every day. 3.7 million YouTube videos are uploaded every day. There are dozens of high quality movie streaming services uploading millions of- Now this, I'm not getting over. I'm sorry, I can't get over this. Cause I could go to Netflix, I can go to the Fire Stick, I can go to Prime, I can go mad places. And Hulu included, Apple TV, Mad I places. focused on listening to vinyl mainly and only Spotify when I need to own you new music. That's it a makes good... me feel less intimidated and more like a little kid when in a record store. That's a good way to consume it as well. That's a very good way to consume it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but the issue that I think I have with film is different in that I'm terrified of wasting my time. I'm horrified of the concept of investing time into a film that i don't think is going to be good full way through and i will waste literally an hour searching for a movie just to end up watching nothing as opposed to taking a chance on a movie that i think might be bad or might be just okay i only want to watch the very best of the best y'all don't know how long i was on that floor when i was sick in september watching movies that i thought would be good watches Simply because I didn't want to waste my time. I spent probably three hours looking for a list of movies that I thought would be good. Appreciate the gifted. I don't know what that is. Why I feel that way towards like film and not towards like music. I'm very open minded when it comes to listening to music. Not necessarily with film, no. ...of hours of content every day. And having too many options has been proven to be a bad thing. In 2000, psychologists from Columbia and Stanford University published a study about jams. On a regular day at a local food market, people would find a display table with 24 different kinds of jams. Okay. Then on another day at that same food market, people were given only six different types of jam choices. The store sold more jars of jam when they only offered six different choices. Okay, are these six different flavors though? Versus versus like 24 different flavors? Appreciate the gifted. Or is this like, are some of the jams organic? Are they all made by like the same company? Um, is there a knowledge of each brand that 
the uh, user or the or the shopper has prior to going into the store to buy anything. Um, there, I feel like there are additional questions for something like this. Like at a base, it looked like it makes sense because there's like this. Uh, what do you call it? I mean, he just mentioned it like a paralyzation of a person when you have too many options in front of you. Um, so it's like this fear, like, oh, my God, I got to go through so much to choose, blah, 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 blah. But if it's all different flavors, then this is a, a beautiful study. Then, um, But if there's like, OK, this one's organic. This one's by this company. This was by this company. But we just offer it all at the same time. Like, I don't know. It's easy to feel confident and fulfilled that you chose the right jam when there's only six jars. But when there's 24, you start to feel overwhelmed. You start to wonder why there are so many in the first place and you realize it's just less stressful to not choose any. You shouldn't feel bad that you can't choose what is the best music or content to consume out of the millions of options. It might just be that they think if there's less available it's popular since a lot of people look it up. It's much easier to just listen to an album or song that you already know is good, one you've been listening to for years, rather than to dive into the haystack trying to find the needle that could be your new favorite song. And that's what most people are doing. In 2021, 70% of the USA market was listening to old music over new music. But let's say you wanted to navigate- I play like Madden or 2K. If the movie makes me pause the game, then I'm enjoying it. That is crazy. But if it doesn't pull me away from the game, then I don't feel like I wasted as much time. First of all, you wanting to be pulled away from a game as mundane and repetitive as Madden in 2K while searching for new movies that will pique your interest is so insane to me. Like, if it works, cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on that. But the method that you're using to get to that end goal is probably the biggest sense of torture I've ever heard anybody endure to go through and take in new cinema. Holy shit. 80 millions of songs. Never heard that before a day of my life. It's uploaded every month. This is what. And that's how you know those games are fucking garbage now when you can play them while watching a movie in the background that arduous process would look like. First, you'd have to stay up to date with hundreds of artists and when they are dropping, which means you'd have to follow some sort of social media page that promotes new music. But those pages generally only post what's considered popular since they need likes and engagement on their posts so they can grow and sell promotion to labels and smaller artists. I'm not- mm, Would y'all follow a rap? I mean, y'all y'all listen to everybody. I'm not gonna say you don't. Hating, life is expensive, and I understand people gotta make money. I don't have any... Well, no, I follow Detroit rap news. They be posting rappers and shit like that, so I can't say that. Funny. I mean, this exact problem has destroyed countless... Yeah, rap TV, not a good example. ...music YouTubers. There used to be dozens of channels harvesting a community of music fans. Now there are only a few left because if you use three seconds of a song in a video, you get copyright claimed and they take your money. How are you supposed to make videos about music if you can't play the music? And if you because can't the people that were making those videos were supposed to be doing it for the incentive of like putting together a music collage of sorts or their own musical taste and putting it out there to their audience and whatnot. Like if they don't end up doing it, you know, long term or whatever the case might be, I wouldn't necessarily say they never had a passion for music, but there was I think there's enough people that post their musical opinions or their thoughts about what's going on musically or, you know, their taste or playlist, so to speak, um, that are passionate enough about it to keep posting regardless of monetization issues. Because I had a whole bunch of shit. If I took you through my demonetized section, my copyrighted section, like niggas think that I post on my main channel and those videos don't get copyrighted. Oh, well, you post them because the rent must be due. Nigga, I haven't made any significant change or cash off of my main channel in so fucking long. And it don't really mean anything because at the end of the day, what inspired the post was what I wanted to talk about when it came to the music itself, not, you know, this about to pay X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah make money off the video, it's too expensive and time consuming to put the care necessary to build a following. Every Ox Battle video I've uploaded- You don't make a lot from YouTube? Not from my main channel, no. I didn't say- I, I didn't say the purpose of the of the live channel for a minute was to overtake the uh, the main channel by, by leagues. Since April has been demonetized, which I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of destroyed this- This, this literally, like my, my live channel has 10% of the audience of my main channel and overtakes it in revenue by like 30 times series which is why it's and i'm not complaining about that i'll still post on my um my main channel but letting you know 
in the beginning, like I said, I would have never continued posting over there if I didn't start streaming. Streaming is the whole reason why I ever even continue posting on my main channel, because I just thought I was getting bored. I genuinely was just getting bored. And at the beginning of 2022, if Elden Ring didn't come out, I just would have stopped posting completely. Not because of copyright or, or demonetization or nothing. I just would have stopped posting. I just got bored. Important for me to thank today's sponsor, Aura, for helping support the channel. Are you tired of receiving W ad, bro? W ad. Half. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link, aura.com slash patrickcc. Aura has many other features to protect all different apps to get things like Aim. Aura has them all in one organized app. And, or you can go to aura.com slash pat. Fans can't rely on tastemakers and they have to follow the artist directly. But whenever an artist posts on their social media, new song dropped or out now, the algorithm actively hides the posts because Instagram and TikTok do not want them posting anything that is going to take the user off their app and onto another. So even the artists that you you follow and want to be notified when they drop won't show up on your feed i i get what he's saying though like it's like a it's an algorithmic based thing to or sometimes it's pay for it too by the way though like a lot of people can pay to have their shit pop up or there's an incentive to uh have financial interference do the work for you when they're suppressing you know um artist engagement based on like you put something out if it drives traffic or you have a link somewhere and it puts it to another website or it puts it on another application like suppression of your announcement of this record or this music uh will take place and so it's even less of an incentive to even make a post saying that you're you know coming out with a project or something like that if you're a smaller act and you're relying on something like uh media you know social media to put your records out there or something like that is really no incentive the only way an artist can get around this is paying for exposure through ads. Therefore, the artists with the most money, whether that be yeah, independent or signed to a major label, are the ones that end up on your feed. We all know that money doesn't buy talent, and 99.9% .9 of the time, the talented artists don't have the money to rise to the top of the algorithm. So then the artists become desperate. And can you really blame them? They begin performing gimmicks and antics on TikTok to get a crumb of organic exposure, like making some stupid song that only people like as a soundbite in the background of other TikToks. And when the artist gets rewarded for this strategy, they do one of two things. They get resentful that people liked this stupid thing that they created for attention, and then they go back to making the actual music that they wanted to create, only for that music to fall on deaf ears because the listeners were never really fans of them. Or they continue to make gimmicks hoping to go viral again, leading to the repetitive cycle of nonsense that nobody actually likes. Who, but do, do you know of an artist that has a TikTok account that's like more popular or a social media presence that's more popular than their music? And they're trying to be like an active musician or rapper? Because I don't know of any. Koi LaRae? Eh, Lil Mabu? I know nothing about Lil Mabu. Steve Lacey has a huge TikTok following. Like he does well on TikTok. NLE, Jake. I feel like Jake's a bad example though. Because his music is genuinely ass in my opinion. Are Twitch streamers benefiting from the recent rise in ad breaks from unsubbed users? I mean, I would say so based off analytics. Because of bad habit? Okay. So then why are record labels signing these gimmicks knowing that they don't really have that much to offer? Won't a label make more money off the next Tyler the Creator, J. Cole, or Kendrick Lamar? Well, yes, but that's way too risky. For around 100 years, an artist had like one way to make a music career possible. They would record a demo, perform shows in the closest city to their home, and hopefully gain a reputation for being a promising talent. Maybe they would get the attention of a radio or club DJ and get their music broadcasted to a larger but still generally localized market. Then music labels hired A&Rs to scout talent like a football coach, going city to city visiting small clubs, bars, and listening to local radio stations to see who has potential for a record deal. If the artist was lucky enough to get a record deal, they would have a team dedicated to helping develop the artist, fine tune their music, image, and creative direction. And I feel like this conversation works much better if you apply it to somebody who has like the right to say it. If there is someone who were to say hip hop is dying, but I feel like this comment wouldn't come from that type of person who's putting in enough effort to find new music, 
and giving themselves reasonable enough goals to attain like five artists I want to find this month or three to five artists or something like that. I want to find a new album that's going to be my favorite of the month or something like that. I want a couple songs to put on my playlist that are new to me from newer artists. I feel like people that have reasonable goals that also take themselves to the task of looking for new music aren't going to run into this issue of hip hop specifically is dying. Um, and when I hear that talking point, I'll know who it's from, generally speaking. Push their music out to a national market. And so I feel like this is not, this, this is a non-issue for people who actually take that type of shit serious. See what cities take a liking to their new talent. And as you can imagine, this was a massive time and financial investment. And record labels would continuously try and market these artists even if the fans weren't immediately impressed. Why? Because they believed in their talent and spent so much effort to discover and develop them. Labels would also scout and sign a wide variety of different talents because if one artist didn't work, mm -hmm. well, it didn't make sense to push the exact same sound. These a &Rs were trained professionals. They were humans using their human experience to invest and promote what they think other humans would like. And it worked like that almost flawlessly for like 80 years. Okay, flawlessly might be a little bit of a stretch. The old way made it basically impossible for a new artist or an upcoming artist to break through. Like we were way too reliant on record labels. There were probably mm. so many great artists that never got discovered because an A&R for a music label just never happened to be where they were when they were performing in some bar or bowling alley. For the this is facts. I, I still strongly believe the greatest rapper of all time will never be a productive conversation this topic because they haven't been they haven't been seen influential than I realized me personally they haven't been seen the greatest rapper of all time has yet to be seen because he either got he or she either got passed up they're dead now or they've yet to be found it's never gonna be what's available there's always something better always the average person whoever you got at your top easily overtaken by this nigga whoever it is unknowns to you the only music that existed was stuff that was on the radio or in movies or on mtv or just what their friends liked but that's also what made the music so iconic is because like everybody knew the same stuff then the internet came no one beating wayne sean i would like to agree with you but i'm sure it's a nigga out there that's cutting hair that's nicer than everybody which was great for a little bit until it wasn't. The internet created the opportunity. For he he an e-boy right now posting on Tumblr still. Like you just don't know. For any artist to get their music out to the world. So individually for artists, it was so much better, but it destroyed music communities. Music that once unified us is now dividing us. Before everyone had smartphones, the internet was a fringe hobby that introverted people and children used. Chameleonaire, Soldier Boy, and the entire SoundCloud rap era used the internet to create a wave so dominant that it changed the music industry. From 2012 to roughly 2018, SoundCloud was a place for innovative, interesting, and counterculture rap music. Being a SoundCloud rapper was perceived as someone who had a failing music career, which made the community strong and more cult-like rooting for these rappers to win. But then the internet rapper became a normalized, formulaic career path that labels figured out how to dominate and the community aspect around internet rap disappeared. The algorithm made the process of discovering talent less about taste and more about objective data. ANRs are now just data analysts who look for boosts in streaming data. Record labels don't care how the music sounds, they just care if people are listening. But as we explained before, people are not necessarily listening to music for the same reasons that they used to. And sometimes the algorithm or streaming data is just wrong. It just doesn't mean that the song is good or that the artist is objectively talented talented. It could be random. It could mean nothing. Think about the YouTube algorithm. You watch one video about dogs. All of a sudden you see another one recommended to you. You click that. Now three are recommended. You go down one YouTube wormhole and your whole feed is transformed into only dog content. Music algorithms operate similarly. Let's say you listen to a couple pop smoke songs on Spotify. You start getting recommended similar artists who are using the same style beats and sounds. Before you know it, your Discover Weekly is flooded with every Brooklyn drill and UK drill rapper in existence. I didn't know how much people rely on that though. Like a Discover Weekly. I, I didn't know like the only time I actually only time I get new music on this on this phone or or any of my devices is when I manually put the search in to to grab that particular artist because I know what I'm looking for before I type it in. I've never once got a recommendation off of Apple Music or 
off of Spotify or off of literally anything. I'd have to have already like had a image of the cover art or the name um, and then put it in. Sometimes I haven't heard them and then I'll put it in, but I generally got it from somewhere else, just searching, uh, uh, searching elsewhere. You were in a drill mood for a couple of days and now Spotify made it your entire listening experience. Then the upcoming artists are incentivized to copy someone else's sound because the only way they'll make it into the algorithm is if they can be categorized alongside another bigger artist. So you have to manually trick the algorithm and listen to a bunch of different stuff on purpose to get recommended a decent variety or not rely on the algorithm at all. Yeah, like I feel like that's kind of the better solution because you're not going to get a company like Spotify to change their uh their system but it's hard not especially to if it's working and nobody's complaining this is a small subsection of people that's and complaining I'm about this, this title rely on them when they're extremely convenient and this is a little bit of a tangent but it's getting crazy the other night i was driving and i was going to pick up some food for dinner and there's a car coming at me and their headlights just totally blinded me i didn't say anything i didn't make a noise i didn't text anyone i didn't call anyone but i did think to myself like dang their lights are so bright and I started thinking what about okay do you think we're in for you personally I don't know if like this is a description of like a like an era um it's it's hard to say cuz you never nobody ever knows like what like era they're in until after it's passed like you don't really know how to describe this wave or this current you know what i'm saying piece of music until you're removed from it five ten years from now we could definitely go back from now and listen to it but i don't think it's complete enough to really have a definitive name or idea or even direction because there's still so many different types of music that people are putting out that are all i won't say equally as popular but are making a ton of noise right now it's hard. It's really hard to say and land on a name or a, or a movement. Hey, is this legal or like, can they get in trouble or why are they so bright? Just all these questions. But I do know the one thing that needs to end as we continue and we move forward with the mainstream is they need to stop sampling. That's one thing that they have to stop doing. When it comes to hip hop, you got to stop. You got to stop about these bright headlights. I pick up the food, I get home, I pop on YouTube, and what do I see? A video titled, Blinding Headlights Are a Growing Problem on US Roads. And no, this was not a new video. It's six months old. No, sampling is a staple when done well. This era, or at least this year, has to stop. Sampling in itself, there's nothing wrong with. There's some of my favorite songs of the last 20, 30 years have, have utilized and chopped up and creatively implemented sampling into their music. But the way it's been used most recently has to stop. Pretty much, and I didn't realize this until someone noted it to me, every song that I put in my in my list for the worst songs of the year what had a, had a bad sample in it. Every single, almost every single one. And if it didn't, it referenced the style of music in such a generic way that it was almost offensive. And no, I don't watch content about cars or about headlights or social problems. And yeah, I watched the video and I'm honestly glad it was recommended to me because I really wanted to know. <laughs> like aside from this being kind of scary and creepy, like how is the algorithm inside my head? It's incredibly convenient. The Has that ever happened to you? Like when you were you were talking about something and then a few minutes later, like it was recommended to you. That's actually never happened to me. I'm I'm glad it hasn't happened. Um, I didn't know. Like a lot of people tell me it happens to them regularly. It never has happened to me yet. The convenience of being recommended content, or in this case, music, is slowly destroying our autonomy. You have to actively go out of your way and make small choices. You got to break free from the matrix. Such as like what music you want to listen to to defeat the algorithm, which is why editorial playlists that are created by humans should be a saving grace. Keyword, should be. A human analyzes the streaming data, then listens to confirm if it's a good song or- Yeah, but now you can't even confirm if the nigga putting the music on the list is, uh, is doing it for like righteous reasons. 
like a human could t- could potentially be as bad as a bot could be, could be potentially as bad as an algorithm like generally you would expect those to be like the tastemakers or the people that you get solid recommendations from but if they say oh uh this publication wants to be in good graces with this artist then the the, the person that works underneath the publication oh you got to do it this particular way we're not going to allow you to talk about this particular record that's why when we saw that billboard top 20 list for rap albums i'm sitting up here like these niggas are not serious you can't describe your love for this record in a way that's normal to the average person without me looking at you like you not dick sucking insanely right now. There has to be something that happened. I don't know what happened upstairs, but something happened for you to, to for you to be talking about this record. Like, there's no way. There's no way. And we all heard the record and we know what it was. There's no way you're talking about this like that. Absolutely. Or a unique song. It doesn't. It don't work. Then it can. adds it to a playlist for people to listen to and enjoy. But unfortunately, Spotify playlists are corrupt. Shocker. They are doing the exact uh, yeah, same no. thing they've been doing to radio forever. Payola. Whoever pays the most money to the tastemakers, aka the. Well, I didn't know it was this direct. Radio DJs and playlist curators makes it to the top. Upcoming artists realize social media is not a fair market and they get desperate for exposure by sacrificing their art. And the fans who are too busy to become full-time A&Rs get screwed because they think that what is being recommended to them or what's on the radio or what's on Rap Caviar is all that music has to offer right now. But the truth is, right now there are so many objectively great artists making great music. Like probably more than ever. Just take the YouTube channel Colors as one example. Every few days they upload a video of a talented artist who likely has a full catalog of great music you can go and enjoy. Good shit, look at colors more often. So why do you feel deprived of great music when it's obviously not that hard to find? Well, that's because it's not necessarily the music that you're craving, it's community. It's a sense of belonging. You have been lied to. You have been told that you should be more ambitious. You should be a boss, a hardworking Sigma grindset demon chasing a life filled with experiences, material things, and forget all that having a family simple life nonsense. Young people feel this pressure. We feel like no matter what we're doing in life, it's not as good or as fulfilling as what it could be. I mean, just open any social media app and you'll be overloaded with all the amazing things you could be doing. In fact, you- I mean, the harsh reality of that though is like, Nobody wants to entertain the idea that life might never be better for you than it might be right now. So it's like I have to give a justification to myself to keep going or striving because I want things to be better than they are today. But are you OK with things the way they are today? To a point where you would continue working and doing everything just as hard if your life never got any better than it was in this very moment. And to me. Or a lot of people, they be like, nah. That dog was cute, though. That dog was adorable. I kind of want to go back to it. Hold, let me go back to the frame. Social media app, and you'll be open. I don't ever see cute dogs. The... Look at this dog. Look at this fucking dog. That's adorable. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest. That's adorable. That's adorable. That's great. See, that make you smile. That's a reason to keep living. That's a reason to keep working hard, knowing this dog is still alive. You feel me? Knowing he's still alive, you got to keep going. Because this, this nigga going to get destroyed by the sun one day. You got to make his life decent while he here. You know what I mean? Amazing things you could be doing. In fact, you probably got this grind set mentality not from people in your neighborhood or the people who've been stuck in your town for generations, but rather other people online. Over half of Americans spend more than 50% of their time online. And although we are more connected than ever digitally, we still feel alone. 34% of Americans expect to spend more time by themselves, with 37% saying they don't interact with anyone at least once a week. Now, most of us are alone because most of us don't really have a third place. Think of your home as your first place where you spend, you know, most of your time. And then work or school as your second place. Where is your third place? Nigga say he don't know me, he's talking specifically to you. A home away from home where people feel comfortable and at ease. A place where you can pop in and out with little or no money. Coffee shops, barber shops, pubs, plazas, recreational spaces, YMCAs, parks, record shops, skate parks, hangout spots where we would bump into acquaintances, interact with strangers and build a sense of community. A place where maybe you could listen to music <laughs> or discuss music. Niggas say it sound like losers. Chill, bro. 
or argue about music with people. Now, there is one glaringly obvious third place for music people, concerts. But in hip hop? Absolutely not, you gotta pay for access. Concerts are a mess. Have you ever became friends with somebody at a, at a concert? Like met a, a group of new people or something like that? I don't feel like that's the ever really happened. The nothing hits the same anymore is basically late stage capitalism. Sure. They so Yes? How many people y'all met at a concert? Everything is a 30 minute to an hour drive. No, there was a cute white girl by me. No, I'm not talking about girls that you fucked while you were at a concert. Those aren't friends. Yes, and she was a great person. Well, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. I didn't know the return on I didn't know the return on concerts was this big, chat. Shocker to me. Suck. Hip hop concerts are by far the worst live music experiences that there is. Well, damn, dude, what the fuck? They are typically bad performers with a crowd full of people too cool to participate. And on top of that, the shows are insanely expensive. I spent $1,000. Yeah, make friends, Sean. What the fuck did that turn into? Excuse me for, you know what? You could pay for access to people if you fucking want to. I chose not to, and I still got, you know what, chill. I don't even have to do this. Why am I responding to you? You know, I'm gonna put my hood on. Because in reality, that's what I do in, in reality anyway. I put my hood on. <laughs> see what I did there, chat? You see what I did? I put my, see what I, when I said I put my hood on? You give you didn't see it. You didn't see it. That's why, like I said, this rap shit really easy if I really wanted to put my mind to it. I was on a Drake concert ticket and saw people filming themselves oh, to man. show their social media followers that they were at a Drake concert. Rapper but they do this everywhere, though. There's lip sync the words while the DJ just plays the MP3 file you can hear online. They might ad lib a few times and jump around. So little by little, people are not going to as many rap concerts because it's just a big waste of time and money. To no surprise, rappers who are our great live performers have more longevity in the genre because that in-person real experience will last so much longer and mean so much more than any digital experience we are using our phones as our third not gonna lie drake concert seems fun i think you gotta know what you're getting when you go to these places like i don't have a really a really a rubric or analytics on like what the sales are for these concerts i would assume he wouldn't make such a bold claim if it were easily debunked but I would say, like, I would go to a Drake concert because a Drake concert would seem fun. I would go to a, you know, a, a, a Travis Scott. Well, no. Whoa. Um, I would. Go <laughs> I would go to like a like a like a like a Cal, like a Cali Uchis festival or something like that. You know, like, you know, somewhere where the energy is going to be like big, like the type of energy that I get. No, chill. See, y'all. All right. I did not mean to say that third place some of you kai Sinat's bedroom on your screen is you can say literally your third place we can immerse ourselves into any subgenre, niche forum and interact with other digital versions of people but as i stated before oh tyler the creator's incredible live oh nah i'm i'm good off that one Over saturation and money i fuck with tyler the creator though it's made it impossible to figure out where on the internet is actually worth spending your time playboy cardi and his opium label artists as well as yeet are dominating right now because they built a community. The fans have basically a dress code of Rick Owens, dog chains, and trench coats to look like Dark Souls characters. Yeet has invented his own language that the fans have written a dictionary for. They even have their own handshake. And yeah, sure, you might think it's cringe, but it's actually kind of beautiful. These fans feel like they belong to something. And they do. But it's so much harder to create this sense of community on the internet than it used to be. Which is another huge reason why hip-hop is dwindling. Whereas genres like country, who are underrepresented on social media, have a very uniform aesthetic combined with amazing live shows are thriving. Now I can almost guarantee there will be a top comment on this video that looks something like this. People have been saying rap is dying since the birth of rap. Mainstream rap has never been where the quality resides and you know that. Now this argument is right, but it's entirely missing the point. Yes, you could make an argument that the current state of hip hop is better than it's ever been for individuals. If you want to do the hard work, you can discover hours and hours, thousands of high quality songs to indulge in, and you don't really have to spend a fortune to do it, but you'll probably be alone because your friends and community are too busy to be full-time music enthusiasts. I don't think that's true. In reality, like, I listen to music I don't like all the time to appease the people that I'm around.
I've seen Carly Uchis in concert three times and she is 100% one of my favorite ever performers. Probably mm. not the best place for you to go because her concerts are always flooded with nothing but Latinos. Damn. I'm still going to go though. I'm going to get my my Latin ear for a minute. But like with this, it's just kind of like Bro, you don't know how many times I had to listen to uh Too Sexy from Drake in 2021 bro you don't know how many times i had to listen to uh shit who else can i think of city girls uh sexy red is good but sometimes you know i'll be hearing her too much you know like and it's okay i i, I think that people are overestimating the importance of the musical backdrop in these moments where you're supposed to be having a good time with your friends or you know what i'm saying new associates it doesn't matter that much to a point where i hear a bad song or a song that i think is bad or i have an opinion of in the background and i'm focused on that while i'm you know what i'm saying um having whatever time i'm having you're saying that's not what he's saying but i don't feel like this isn't like or at least to me, I never really felt like music was the place that most people develop, like, most of their friends. I'm not saying you can't develop friends through a musical lens or anything like that. But the way it's been described or presented to me right now is almost like... Please listen to Emmanuel Doris. Okay. But the reason, it, like, the way it's being explained to me right now is kind of just like... If they not listening to what you listening to, you're not going to hang out with them. And I want to believe that's not what he's saying, but like, I, I don't have a different interpretation of the way he might mean that. And so to me, it just comes off like a little, uh, what's that word? Dramatic. No, I will. Why are you lying to him? I will. I wouldn't say it's pretentious to feel like that. I get how you could come to that conclusion based off of like what this video has led up to. But the way I look at it is just kind of like I don't really share tastes with anyone that I know. And we're still friends. We're still good. We're still cool. We still do shit together. We still hang out. We have gone on trips with each other. We I, I think what what our I think our differences or our lack of uh, common interests is what made us closer a lot of the time. My friends told me two weeks ago they love Cody Blue. Crazy that they didn't feel the same thing when I showed them in 2022. Oh, so they caught up. I do have some friends with similar tastes, but I have a lot more friends that I don't have as much in common with. And we're closer. We just are. Discussing music was a definitely a vital part of friendship as a kid in the 90s. You could discuss music with people, but I, I feel like. I mean, obviously, it makes sense if you have common interests, you would be more likely to have a friendship with that person. But that's just not how it go. Or at least that's not how it's been for a lot of people is what I would say. And so I feel like these things are kind of made to be like maybe too important in public settings or when you're face to face with people. Um because in your in the quarters of your own home, like these are things that you have to do anyway, unless you got unless you kind of just like a autopilot kind of nigga and like you don't mind the algorithm feeding you basically everything like you turn on Netflix and you click on the first thing that you see, you uh, turn on your cable TV and you open your shit up and you uh, watching the first channel or the first show that pop up or you turn on Spotify and you play the first song that's recommended to you. Like unless you're one of those individuals, with which a lot of people are not. You're going to have to find your own taste and shit. This guy lives in Oklahoma. Of course, the concert's going to be trash. Why would rappers bring the A game for some potato farmers? Nigga, chill, because that's not even fair. <laughs> it's not even fair. But like I say, like, what the fuck? I got to you got to look for your own taste, especially when life brings you away from people. As you get older, you're going to get a job. You're going to be going to college. You're going to be um, working on projects, doing independent things that make you more of an individual um you're gonna have to find your own things that you like hobbies tastes preferences and shit like that you're gonna be on your own more 
So this is just kind of like a rite of passage, I feel like, for a lot of people. So they're just going to keep listening to what's popular on Rap Caviar on the radio. They won't know any of the songs that you like, and you'll either have to listen to oversaturated, repetitive, and mind-numbing mainstream rap music, or... And that's not really a problem. I mean, it is in the grand scheme of things when it comes to newer acts getting to the mainstream and it being less algorithmically based. But for the person that's not actively a participant in the in the capitalism... um to them they're just having a good time and it don't mean anything more than that even if i don't like drake or i don't like the music that he's putting out right now i'm not leaving the function or any type of you know what i'm saying get together because he's playing i could give a fuck up. I, I hate fat d i hate it but i it's it's on the background like y'all want to listen to it cool like nobody's asking me yo you got a problem with this like it's not like oh what you it's not like what you drinking tonight like it's not that it's not that serious be alone with your great music and what good is music if you can't enjoy it discuss it or even argue about it with others we want everyone to like what we like or maybe we genuinely want to like something to fit in because we want to belong but I no i don't th i don't agree i mean it's true i just don't think it's a good approach our society doesn't want us to all sing together and be unified they want us divided and alone It's a little, you know what I'm saying? It's a little drastic, I would say. But still, like, the result of it is you find your own shit or everybody has, you know, single mind. I don't think it goes the that deep. The first Tesla Cybertruck accident was record. Elon fanboys punching the air right now. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. That ain't funny. Smiley face, smiley face smiley face what the fuck yeah i do think it, i think it's i think it's dramatic when you when you look at it from the perspective of like whether or not it'll alter the 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 mood because it just won't you know nobody really gonna be thinking no no regular person you know outside of social media gonna be looking at that situation pondering on how we're gonna uh come together and have a good time because there's a song that you like and i don't but I get it though, because he makes a lot of solid points in the in the whole in the whole shit. But the way it comes together is just a little overblown. I feel like, but I get it. Like I said, it's still is is relevant. And if we having this conversation simply about just like capitalism and how can we get those smaller acts to more uh, notoriety and how you can dismantle the system of pay for play. And how you can get through the algorithm organically as an artist. I get what he's trying to say, but instead that's of a better hip -hop, conversation. I listen to Afro beats, jazz, mm. classical music, etc. But it's up to you to venture out more in music. Yeah, you're an individual. You're your own person. You're your own person, bro. And that's another thing too that I get like when people go crazy about like hip hop and shit like that. I'm like, bro. Like when the doc when Dr. Umar came out, he was like, Oh yeah, like like it's always a rave about hip hop. And I'm like, bro, you know it's other genres that are black too. It's it's jazz, it's 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 dance hall, it's afro beats, it's country, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of music that is uh that is kind of black created that blues yes that you just you, like you never see anybody talk about when it comes to the protection of these things granted hip-hop is probably one of the most profitable and uh most popular but i'm like if you need to protect anything it's those blue shits man it's that shit that really make you feel something i sound like post malone my bad let me chill let me chill let me chill let me calm down let me calm down i did too much my fault my fault i did too much i take it back Chad, I take it back. My fault. My fault. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I did, though. I did. <clears throat>